Hi, welcome to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall. Did you know you can follow me on Instagram? www.instagram.com backslash Creative Katie. See what I'm up to in my studio on a day to day basis. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and if you like what you see, share it with your creative friends. Today we have Index Card of Day number 21. It's entitled, So What If It Takes a Year? It's an inspirational eye card that I think I'm going to turn into a fridge magnet. It uses mixed media technique tag 14 and 15, which all deal with sentiments. Links to the products used can be found in the description box below, as always. Here's my hydrangea and the inspiration for this iCAD. So what you're looking at here are 10 of my repurposed flashcards for the last 10 of my 30 iCADs that I'll be doing. And I will be searching flea markets and thrift shops and garage sales to find some more of these because they really are a great substrate to, to work on. And if you haven't tried it, I'd give it a try. They're great, cheap and expensive. So I went to Michael's and I bought a brand new stencil. Now, I'm not going to lie, this stencil, I have an idea for something and I'm not sure if it's going to work with the stencil, but my rule is I can't buy something new unless I use what I have. So I'm going to use the little one. And I like this stencil because you've got three different sizes. This one's called succulents, which surprises me because when I see it, even though they had stenciled it with green, when I see it, I see flowers. So I think, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the smallest one or the biggest one, but I am going to put modeling paste through this stencil. So that was the Crafters Workshop one, and it dries fairly quick. The other one that I use a lot is the Liquitex, and it's the Flexible Modeling Paste. Find one you like and stick with it. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's brand name or otherwise. So I'm just quickly deciding whether I'm going to put the paste on and then color or color and then paste. So after a short debate, I decide that I'm going to kind of make the background and I want to make this kind of a blue green. So I have the Deco Art Prussian Blue, which I just bought, and the Yellow Green from Artist Loft. And I have the um, Light Blue Permanent, but I don't think I really use a lot of that. So I'm going to start off by creating the background. And this is kind of the blue, green, the sky, the, the grass, the leaves, um, behind the flower. So I'm just going to spray my iCAD a little bit and just applying very precisely, as you can see, the paint. And I do not, I not want this to get too blended. I want some blending, but I do want to have areas of the Prussian blue and areas of the yellow green, which by the way, I absolutely love. It, it looks goes so well with this Prussian blue. It goes well with so many other colors. So after putting that on and, and seeing, you know, I got fingerprints in it because I didn't use a brush. I decide that I'm going to do the saran wrap technique. And we've done that in one of the iCADs. I just want to put a little bit more paint on here. And I'm just pushing that in here and crinkling it up to get some texture. Now, I peek and I see that, you know, I've got those lines already and because the paint is fairly thick, because it's a heavy body acrylic, it didn't run back into it like it would if it was watercolor. Watercolor, you would have to wait for that to dry. But this didn't run back, so I'm just using a heat tool and I am just drying it on the card. And I just love this color combination. I don't really keep it 
completely. I do something and you'll see what, what and why in a bit. But I absolutely will create with these two colors. They just pop together. So write it down in your book. If you're keeping color combos, that's a good idea. Just write down Prussian blue and green yellow. And now I'm just using the saran wrap as a as a stamp, just giving more texture on here. You don't need expensive uh, stamps, and this is very organic looking. So I'm just using this as a shelf uh, for for my artwork that my husband just put up. It was a Christmas present and I finally decided where I wanted it. And I'm just using up the leftover paint and I will, this will be turned into a collage sheet and I'm sure you'll see me create with it. So I have this stencil of what I see as a flower and I'm kind of deciding, okay, which, which do I want at the top? I think, I think I'm gonna put the flower at the bottom and the sentiment will go at the top. And because my card, you know, these little pieces, when you do ICADs or ATCs, they move around a lot, tape them down and save yourself a headache. This is the palette knife that I like using or credit cards, but this one I, I think I use the most. I'm not sure if it has a particular name. And I'm putting it on fairly thickly because I want to have that texture. And as always with modeling paste, you need to clean your stencil right away and also get it out of the ridges and, and where you close it. Otherwise, it'll seal and you will have a hard time opening it. So strange thing happened, um, you know, in while I was drying it and turning it, I decided that I want the flower at the top. So you see me putting the stencil back on. This stencil is fairly easy. And here I'm showing you, you know, the background I have the blue green and across from it is the orange red reddish tones. So I was going to go, you know, and then I thought to myself, I don't want to really go corally. I've done a lot in that tone. Uh, so I thought, you know, I'm going to go more pink. So I've got magenta and light magenta. And I'm going to grab a makeup sponge. And I'm just going to stencil on top of the um, modeling paste. And this is a cut and dry foam. So I'm just kind of mixing the two paints on the sponge. I do not want this to look one tone. I want lots of different tones. I'm just getting a little too blended. So, you know, I'm, I'm giving it some time to dry and then I decide I'm going to add some Prussian blue, which then turned it very blue and very purpley which wasn't where I was going. And so I just spent time adding more pink, adding more purple, adding more, going back and forth till I got the shade that I wanted. So I ended up with more of a purpley tone, which is the color of my hydrangea, which I absolutely love. I have lots of hydrangeas now that I'm in a, in a climate that I can actually grow them, but only one of them is this purple, periwinkle color. The other ones are all just pink. So I'll be working at getting a few more of them to be purple in this perfect tone. Until then, I'll create in that tone. So this it really started reminding me of, of that. Then I'm adding some of Martha Stewart's metallic paint. And I'll put a link to um, the set of paints that I got. I use them a lot. They are a really nice metallic pearlescent. So here I am using archival ink and I am stamping right through the stencil onto the modeling paste. And so 
Only my focal point gets the stamp. So that will be a new mixed media technique tag that I will put um, when, when I get back to it. So I wanted to fill in the lines here and I was going to use my liner brush and then I decided, you know what, I have my fine liner bottles. And I showed you the one where I kind of did a check to see and I used black. But I think, I thought with this one, you know, I really wanted to go white. And so I'm just flooding the area and it's really easy when there's the modeling paste because it kind of makes a channel and I'm flooding it and just moving it around with the end of this fine liner bottle. I've used these fine liner bottles so much for, for so many parts of um, mixed media. I highly recommend them as a great tool. So there I've kind of, you know, cut, I didn't make you watch all of it, but I thought I'd watch the ends. And I'm just showing the liner brush that I could have used. And at the ends, I'm just pushing out, you know, flooding out the um, acrylic paint that has been thinned. And I'm just trying to make it the same thickness or width of line as what's in the middle of the stencil. So I'm looking and I'm thinking, you know, should I have done black? You know, th that one wasn't done with modeling paste. That was just stenciled on and that was a little bit tougher. But with the modeling paste, because you've got the height dis difference, it was so super easy. So I'm absolutely loving this. And right now, I, I don't even mind the boldness of the background. But at the time, I was thinking that it was a little too um, too dark and it was competing with the focal point. There I showed you how I cleaned the makeup, makeup sponge and the cut and dry foam. So I'm just thinning down the yellow green paint and in a minute I'm going to grab some white just to push this background back. The pattern on it with the plastic wrap just seemed to be competing a little too much. So I'm just, you know, kind of putting the yellow green and some white and just kind of pushing that back a little bit. And I absolutely love, love, love how that turned out. It's kind of marbleized looking and it's just a perfect background for it. And I will continue to play with that a little bit and try to do more of it. I, I, I know about that technique and I've done it before but I think I really need to start playing with it um, a little bit more and seeing where it can take me. So now I decided that I am going to shade around and I'm doing the float technique as you've seen me do. If you've watched any of my videos, inevitably I'm going to be shading using this technique. I love it. You can use this to be low all pencil. You can use watercolor current pencils. You can do, you can shade in multitude of ways. This is, I just find is the quick, easy way for me. And there is a video in my mixed media technique tag series where I teach how this to do this. And it just helps to pop the focal point off the page from the background, separate it. And I'm just going around the edges as well. I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I really, I love the color combination here. This is so beautiful. And, you know, this, I'm definitely going to take this idea and this stencil and color combo, and I'm going to make a canvas with it. So now I'm deciding on my sentiment in here, and I will link the video 
where I talk about making your own stickers and that's even how to download um, free fonts. And here's the binder that I have where I've typed up the, the sentiments and then I played around with it. I have it in different sizes and different fonts and I even numbered them on the side and that way, if I like, I want quote number 94, I can find it in another font. So I'm going to go through my binder here, and I'm going to find all four. There, I've got four different fonts where I've used, used the same sentiment. And, you know, one of them is just going to appeal to me more than others. And I just follow my instincts on that. So I'm cutting up the sentiment. Now, this one... And I show this in the mixed media technique tag number 15 or 16. If I was going to use it, I would mount it on maybe that coffee filter, a rectangle behind it, just to give it a little more substance so it doesn't get lost on my page. But that's included in mixed media technique tag number 14 or 15. I'm not sure. 14. So... I really like the curly cues on this. It really works well with the script stamp that I put onto the focal point. And, you know, here, this quote means a lot to me because, you know, when we set goals for ourselves, we think, oh, it's just going to take forever to get to have this happen. You know, it's four years to get a university degree. It's, oh, you know, I... And for me right now, the thing that I'm focused on is losing weight and getting healthy. And, you know, it's going to take a long time. And, you know, so what if it takes a year? The year will pass anyways. In a year, we're going to be a year older. What do you want to have accomplished in that time? So that's kind of the meaning behind this to me. And I'm just decided I'm edging this with my cobalt blue archival ink. And, you know, I don't have many archival inks. I have black. I have cobalt blue. I've got plum. I think I have a purple. And that would be it. And those pretty much go for everything that I use. I think I might get sepia. So I'm just going to use matte gel and glue that down but I figure you know I've got that archival blue right there so I'm going to just darken the edges they just seem to need that little extra something And I split the word, so what, because it just was too close together and it just was throwing off the balance of where I was putting the sentiment. I know it's a silly thing, but, you know, you have options. I'm just putting the gel medium under and over. So totally going to be using that larger one on a canvas. So, you know, there probably will be a video that it might be similar to this or I might deviate. You never know what happens once I get going. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, should I shade inside here. So I have the Prussian blue, it's right there, and I'm just shading. And it really did make it all the all the nicer. And again, I'm using the floating acrylic technique. So if you're picking a stencil to stamp through, like I did, you're going to want a stencil with bigger open areas so that you can see the um, stamp. And you're also you're going to want a stamp that's on the smaller side, like the script stamp. But play around with what you have and see what you like.
So if you like this color scheme or you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Give me a comment. I love hearing from, from you. I answer everybody. I hope you like this iPad as much as I do. Uh, it definitely is going to get magnetic strip on the back and become a fridge magnet. Bye for now.